Lee Lee Zhang is live at the Capitol. Floor. Live in Tulsa with this story, Lee Lee. Let's get out to Lee Lee Zhang. She is in Dewey County right now with the breaking news, Lee Lee. Most of that damage is in this Winoka area. Just take a look at this roof. It is barely hanging on the side of that building. Hundreds of farms in Oklahoma are still underwater following heavy rain. You know, Ken, we've seen some pretty unbelievable images all morning today, including this one. Pieces of wood just scattered again yards away from the motel and this sign here. This is a very telling image of what we're dealing with out here. This area kind of looks like a lake right now. He says that this area is normally a pond with a nice running track around it. I don't think he's going to be running anytime soon. The suspect rushes into this door with a two by four, basically tearing apart anything that he could get his hands on along this unassuming road in Clearview, Oklahoma. This week, a crime scene unravels. Police were combing through this property that's right behind us. Dr. Perry, are you sorry for what happened? No comment. They don't have a time frame yet on how long it will take to get this all cleaned up. Tonight, we also know that this pit bull mix was taken by animal welfare. Authorities are still trying to figure out who it belongs to. Mr. Pettis, do you have a comment? The accusation of not filing taxes for nine years surrounds Oklahoma City Councilman John Pettis. Linda, I did speak to his aunt. Now, she confirms he actually lived right up the street that we're standing on right now. You're rushing into work or you're rushing into a building, so you don't have a whole lot of time. So in turn, you're forgetting to check whether whether your car is unlocked behind me. You may hear it and you definitely see it. There's a lot more people here at the Capitol at 6 p.m. Here today you were thanking a lot of your younger voters. Some of yeah. them are standing right behind yeah. you right now. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about that. Another thing that people have to remember when they come to the polls is to bring proper ID with them. The vice president is expected to make a formal endorsement during his comments this afternoon. At last check, that vote stands at 6335. But take a look right behind me through those doors for about two hours today, both Republicans and Democrats. They debated and they questioned this bill. Theron Lusk spent a lot of time here as a child. My papa was sitting up here and we just talking, having a good time, get through working out there all day with the cows and picking beans in the garden or whatever. This is how he remembers it. The land belongs to his late grandfather and to this day it remains in the family. But earlier this week it was marked off as the center of an ongoing multi-state investigation. Two bodies were found in shallow graves on the property believed to be those of Michael Swearingen and Jenna Scott. They were last heard from on January 4th, hundreds of miles away in Temple, Texas. It's a bad thing and uh, I just wanted to clear my family's name on behalf of my papa because this is what he built and uh, I didn't want my grandfather's name being tarnished. An ex-boyfriend of Scott's, 44-year-old Cedric Marks, was arrested in Grand Rapids, Michigan last week. He's accused of breaking into Scott's home in August, but in this case, he has not been named as a suspect or a person of interest in Scott and Swearingen's disappearance. Mostly everybody out here know everybody. My grandfather, uh, I don't believe he knows Cedric Marks, but he knows his family members, you know, because my grandfather, he just passed away. He was 98. He's born and raised out here in Clearview. As authorities continue to investigate, Lusk and his family also have questions. I just want to know why. I don't understand why, you know, they put it on my grandfather's land. <laughs> Dramatic body cam video brought into question at a court hearing Friday where a judge decided this man, Sergeant Keith Sweeney, will go to trial for fatally shooting Dustin Pigeon, a man prosecutors say was unarmed and suicidal. 99% plus of the officers, officers who are out there on the street working hard every day do the right thing every single time. Uh, this is one of those situations where we allege that that did not occur. Sweeney has pleaded not guilty to one count of second degree murder. District Attorney David Prater says the jury will have another option at trial. A second degree murder charge which carries 10 to life or the manslaughter charge which carries 4 to life. Uh, the distinction is not only in punishment, it's also in culpability and in the behavior of the defendant. Police were called to a home on the southwest side in November. Officer Eric Howell, who responded that night with Sergeant Sweeney and Officer Troy Nitsky, testified Friday Pigeon was trying to hurt himself, holding a lighter and lighter fluid in his hands. Howell told the court he personally did not feel there was any threat to himself. Around the same time, a less lethal beanbag shotgun was used. Prosecutors say Sweeney also fired by using his pistol. How many times have we had officer-involved shootings in, in in the Oklahoma City Police Department, 
that are not charged. And, and I don't think they should be charged. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Why is this case being looked at differently than any other case? Gary James is representing Sweeney. In court Friday, he argued Howell's memory could have been clouded given the high stress incident and that his testimony may not have spoken for how Sweeney saw the situation. I've handled hundreds of officer involved shootings and, and it's very rare that any officer sees it the same as the other officers. I just miss my baby. I don't want her home and I don't have that chance. It was taken from me. Cynthia Thomas grieves for her daughter, Kaylin. Just 16 years old, Kaylin was shot and killed at a friend's house in McLeod. I didn't even get to get a driver's license. I don't, I don't get to do prom with her. I don't get to watch her go to college. Hand in hand, Kaylin's mother and sisters spent Tuesday morning at the Pottawatomie County DA's office. Two teenagers were taken into custody in connection to the October shooting. One has been formally charged with manslaughter. Her attorney confirms as of Tuesday, she remains in a juvenile detention facility. Bond has been set for $20,000. I don't feel like it's being taken seriously enough or the bond would be higher. In her family's hardest days, Kaylin's mother is thanking their community. McLeod Police Department, I appreciate you so much, so much. They've done everything they can for us and remembering Kaylin as an honor student, an athlete, but also as an aunt, a sister, and daughter in their journey to justice. I love you so much, and I miss you every day, and I'll never stop fighting for you. You're my heart. On any given week, more liquor sees thousands of customers. Most are regulars with shelves of options. But here's what some have in common. It's always been an issue for us, um, uh, parents being allowed to bring their children into our stores. A bill moving through the legislature could change that, allowing minors under 21 to be inside shops like more liquor if they're accompanied by a guardian. Store owner Brian Kerr says it would be more convenient for his customers. If they have their child, they have two options. They can either not come into a liquor store or they can leave their kid in the car, which if the kid's under a certain age, illegal to do that. So then they have zero options other than breaking the law. The bill was presented in committee Thursday by Senator Stephanie Bice. There is somewhat of a competitive disadvantage currently with package stores in that I can take my 14 year old to the grocery store and I can walk through by a wine display and I can purchase a bottle of wine with her standing three feet from me, but she is not allowed to enter a retail spirits establishment currently. Though it did raise some concerns. This bill could be prematurely glamorizing hard alcohol to, to minors. It passed. Kerr says if it's approved by the Oklahoma Senate and signed into law, allowing minors in his store won't be a big deal financially, but. There's no reason kids shouldn't be in a liquor store. It's 2019. If you bring a child into any environment where you want them to know, just tell them, be a parent, take the responsibility seriously and let them understand that there is such a thing as responsible drinking.